Hey everyone, this is Yussi Ascola. I'm the CEO of Leonberg Capital. We are an investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm going to give you five reasons why I would sell B REIT if I owned it. So reason number one, publicly listed REITs are today a lot cheaper than B REIT. Uh, B REIT, because it's a public non-listed REIT, you're going to get in and out more or less at its net asset value. But today the listed REITs are actually priced in many cases at large discounts to the net asset value because you saw their share prices collapse in 2022. Um, to give you a few examples, Avalon Bay Communities, Camden Property Trust, BSR REIT, these are all high quality apartment REITs and they are priced at 20 to 40% discounts to the net asset value. And then if you look at other property sectors where B REIT is also active like industrial, you also have listed REITs like Prologis, uh, East Group properties that are also priced at very significant discounts. And so here you have to ask yourself, why would you pay a premium to invest in B REIT, which is illiquid, externally managed, has a higher cost structure and lots of other disadvantages that we'll discuss later. Um, I think it should be the opposite. It's B REIT that should be priced at a discount. And so reason number two, Publicly listed REITs are a lot more cost efficient and they also do a better job at, at aligning their interests with those of their shareholders than B REIT. And this is largely because of differences in their management structure. B REIT is externally managed and what this means is that it will outsource its management to an outside asset management company, in this case Blackstone, which will earn fees in exchange of its management. And this creates two types of issues. Firstly, the fees are going to be quite significant and they are not going to scale nicely as the REIT gets larger. So uh, these fees are typically a percentage point of the net asset value or a percentage point of the total returns of the REIT. And so the, whether the REIT has 5 billion under management or 50 billion, uh, the fees are not going to get any lower in percentage. Uh, with the scale of the REIT. And so secondly, it also creates significant conflicts of interest because if you earn a percentage of the assets every year, regardless of the performance, as the manager, you're going to be incentivized to just try to grow the pie as large as possible, just keep raising more equity, buy more properties. It increases your fees. And, and so if you look at the publicly listed REIT market, typically those REITs that are externally managed, they are punished with very low valuations because investors have learned that this management structure is not good. Uh, the management cost is higher, more conflicts of interest. To give you one example, global net lease is one of those that's publicly listed and externally managed. And Historically, its returns have been very poor because it's constantly raising more equity to buy more properties and dilute shareholders, but increase their fees for the manager. So instead of having an external management, most publicly listed REITs today are internally managed. And what this means is that the management will be hired as employees of the REIT instead of outsourced to another company. And this is the preferred management structure because the management cost is a lot lower because they, you really enjoy significant economies of scale. And on top of that, the, the interests are better aligned because now you can really tie up the salaries to some performance indicators that are more reflective of true shareholder value creation. Um, and to give you an example, uh, maybe a comparison between B REIT and a publicly listed REIT, uh, B REIT is, um, is going to pay to its manager Blackstone 1% and a quarter of its net asset value each year. And on top of that, it's also paying 12.5% of its annual to total return subject to a 5% hurdle. And still on top of that, you're going to have some selling commissions, some stockholder sh servicing fees. Uh, so it it's accounts to, uh, to very high fees, uh, several percentage points each, each year. In comparison, the publicly listed REIT realty income um, its uh, GNA, so its management cost each year as a percentage of its, its assets is only going to be about 30 basis points. So, so it's a tiny fraction of what uh, the, the shareholders of B REIT are paying to Blackstone. Reason number three, 
publicly listed REITs offer much more potential for diversification than B REIT. Uh, today, if you're gonna invest in B REIT, you're gonna be mainly invested in two different property types. Those are multifamily and industrial. They also have some exposure to some other properties, but this is what uh, their portfolio is mostly made of. And I invest myself also in these property types, but I also like to diversify a bit more. And the main reason for this is that multifamily and industrial today are really hot. Uh, valuations are really high, cap rates are really low. And so I think if we start seeing some cap rate expansion, these are the property sectors that have probably the most to lose from a valuation standpoint. And because of this, I invest also heavily in other property types that have somewhat higher cap rates. These include triple net lease properties, healthcare facilities, and, and other things. And on top of that, I also don't want to be fully invested in the US. Uh, there are lots of foreign REIT markets that uh, provide today very attractive opportunities, in some cases even better ones than in the US. And um, B REIT investors are gonna be, I think they're gonna lack some diversification, which is the only free lunch available in the market today. Reason number four, public listed REITs are liquid. And I think we really underappreciate the benefits of liquidity until we really need it. And we've seen B REIT recently make a lot of headlines because of this, as they restricted the withdrawals of their REIT. What this means is that if you wanted to get out of B REIT right now, it probably wouldn't be possible. And even if it were possible, you'll probably pay some very significant fees. So liquidity really is a major advantage, I think. And in the case of publicly listed REITs, you can sell your shares at overnight whenever you want to, uh, except the weekend, of course, when the market is closed, and you're gonna pay close to nothing. Most brokers these days offer zero dollar commission trading, and that's a big plus. And so reason number five, the last one, and probably the most important one, I think that publicly listed REITs offer today a lot more upside potential. They offer better risk to reward as well. And, and their dividend yields also are in many cases a lot greater than that of B REIT. And this gets back to what we said early in the video. Publicly listed REITs are today very heavily discounted after the poor share price performance of 2022. And so look, if you buy a high quality publicly listed REIT that's priced at a 30% discount to its net asset value, I think that, uh, well, what this essentially means is that you're buying the real estate at 70 cents on the dollar. Even if property values drop somewhat, you have good margin of safety. And as eventually the market recovers from here, I think that uh, these REITs are gonna rise quite significantly. You'll also earn good dividend income along the way and B REIT is not gonna be able to match these returns. And so to recap, publicly listed REITs are today a lot cheaper than B REIT. Their management is cheaper and better aligned with shareholders. They give you better uh, opportunities to diversify. They are liquid. And I think that they offer more upside potential and higher dividend yields at this time. And so these are the reasons why I would sell my shares of B REIT if I owned it today. Uh, this is just my personal opinion. I think that publicly listed REITs are right now a lot more opportunistic and so I don't see a reason to be holding shares of B REIT. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me uh, in the comment section below. And if you want to learn more about the REITs in which I like to invest, feel free to follow me on Twitter where I often post news on my largest uh, REIT holdings. And otherwise, thank you for watching. See you at my next video.